We are Heather and Paul Christie. And for over 12 years, we've worked with executives and entrepreneurs to accelerate change in every aspect of their business. Because we are in the fastest paced business environment that anyone has ever seen before. So join us for the Evolve to Win Show. Hi, and welcome to another Evolve to Win show with Heather and Paul. Hey, everybody. Heather. Paul. Why does employee training, why doesn't it work? Why employee training does not work most oftentimes is because there is no consistency in the follow-up and development of the employee. So I think in this conversation, it's really important to distinguish the difference between training and development. So this is a, this is a really huge distinction too. it really is and, yep. and I, I certainly did not ever think about this back when i was an employee back in the day um but but how big this is you're going to see this if you've ever worked for a company that has come in and provided some sort of great training um and they're not consistent about this the training itself is like oh my god this is awesome yeah. you know my my company's investing in us and they brought in this great trainer and it's awesome um, but development, so, so let me distinguish these two first. Training is when you're typically being taught a new skill, okay? So, so it's, it, whether it's a technical skill, mm -hmm. um, something that is really helping you to do your job operationally. Could be a soft skill. Could be a soft skill. Could have, be something to do communication with communications, skills, yeah. leadership. Right. Um, so, there's, so there's so many different types of training out there, but I want you to think about this. Training is about acquiring new skills. Development, on the other hand, is about reinforcing and building upon the skills that have been learned. So the existing skills. It's building those existing yeah. skills. But here's, here's the thing. If you do a training and you're teaching a new skill, the very first step in learning any new skill is confusion. confusion. <laughs> I'm really good at that. Confusion. So when you're learning something brand new. Which, us which usually is followed by frustration and... Yeah. You're angry and upset and everything that goes along with confusion because nobody mode. really likes to be confused. Yeah. Think about how you are in the space of confusion. Well, hopefully if you've got a great trainer, when you're learning that new skill, you will go from a state of confusion, which is sort of like, I don't know what I don't know. And so therefore this is new and it's different and uh, uh, I'm not good at it yet. But if you have a good enough trainer, hopefully they can get you over that hump into the place where at least you've got some basis of knowledge on this new skill. Though a lot of times what companies do, this is where they fail. This is where it doesn't work. They invest all this money in an training mm. event, right? Just one single event. And the event in and of itself is typically not enough to actually change behavior. And of course, the whole reason we do training ever is because we want to have new results. The only way to get new results is we've got to change thinking and we've got to change behavior. Well, if we just do this one massive dose fire hose of information, we know human beings can only take in so much. So mm -hmm. especially if you try to do a full day training, you know, the, the longer you go, the less it actually takes hold, right? Right. Well, and not to mention that um, how long it stays with somebody. So the training may be a, maybe a half day or a full day training with somebody on a team on technical skills or whatever it is. But if you don't follow up with the development, the consistent development, that information just gets lost in the ether, right? Yeah. Like it just, just somehow disappears from our brains. But here's what, here's what sucks about that is that the employee, the manager, the boss, the owner, they think that they already know this now. They say, okay, I've right. already done right. X training, so we already know this, but they're extremely frustrated because the results haven't changed, because the behaviors haven't changed. And if you've ever been in this situation before, I know I have. In fact, I'll, I'll tell my story. When I, I have was, a story too. Okay, good. When I was a practicing lawyer, I was at the same firm for probably seven years before my firm actually brought someone in to train us. And they trained us on DISC at the time. That was back in 2001. And I remember just loving that training. I ate it up. I was so excited to learn something outside of the day-to-day -day grind and mm -hmm. just learn something that would build 
me and build my team overall and take our communications to the next level. It was, I was so excited. And the, that I rode that high because I think we had a two hour training session. Uh And I rode that high all the way into the next day, possibly into the rest of that week. But once that training was over, it was like everybody's assessment went into a drawer somewhere. No one talked about it ever again. And everything that we gained, I think we not only lost, but I almost feel like we might have even taken a step further back because we had this this unbelievable like connection in the moment and then it was gone, Mm -hmm. right? So it was the, so the training was really good and it was a powerful and it was effective. But where we lost and where it didn't work is there was zero development after the fact. So we didn't get to develop these new skills we had just learned. And meanwhile, I thought I knew DISC from a two-hour training. And then once we got into this business, we've been studying it and studying it for so many years now. I had no idea how much I didn't know. We never even scratched the surface. Right. So that's that was a huge fail on the part of my firm. I mean, kudos to them for bringing for investing in bringing a trainer in. But if if you're bringing a trainer in, you're going to invest that kind of money. Really, be looking at what is the consistency in the plan for follow up, so but, that you can develop. But also, the skill. what like you need to know before you bring somebody in to do the training, like what is the result yeah. that you want? So you know you're gonna you're, if you want a result. So for example, you want, you know, you want better communication within your organization. So you say, well, I need to bring in a trainer to teach some skills, some some communication skills that the team can use. Now, some people are going to ask the question, well, is that training or is that development? Because people already know how to communicate. And yet, do they really? Like, what have you actually been yeah, taught well, in terms I mean, of skills for communicating? Well, the fact that, that there's so many disgruntled employees in the workplace and uh, so much conflict in the work, workplace as well, people taking things personally all the time, there's, there's skills that can be learned how to create a better work environment. And so a lot a train, of conflict, but even more avoidance of conflict. Yeah. And yeah. so, so somebody would say, so, you know, a manager would say, well, I'm going to bring this trainer in to do the training and you get this, so you bring in a great trainer and you get this awesome information, right? Mm-hmm. And then, but they may use it for the first day or two, mm-hmm. but if you do not know what the results you're looking for, so it's always, what is the result that you want? How will you be able to measure whether or not the training worked and then the follow-up development continues to work? And is it through surveys? Is it through having conversations with your employees? Is it just by watching certain aspects of the business to see if they start getting better. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that you can be watching, but I think one of the missteps that a lot of companies make is that they do not set out the result, what they're looking for in a way to measure that result. That's right. So two pieces of that, but they're not specific enough on the result. First and foremost, what results? So another way to say it is what behavior are you looking to change for what result and how are we measuring it? And I think you're absolutely right that most people don't take it all the way that direction. A lot of times people call us in and they want some sort of training and they will have already identified the type of training they want. And when we dig deeper and we ask questions, we find out that they need something completely different. They're they're looking at a symptom and they see what they think is a solution, but it's not to really get crystal clear on the result you're after. Can you identify the training need? But how are we measuring it? And then there's that next piece which is what do we need to do to develop this new skill? Because We're dealing with human beings who are habitual, Mm -hmm. right? And one thing we know about training, we're looking to develop a new skill. We're looking to change behavior because it doesn't take a professional training to get people to do what they're already doing. That's going to happen anyway. So when you think about this, when you define the behavior that needs to change, Mm -hmm. you do the training, what is that follow-up mechanism? And if the if the person who if you're using an outside trainer, maybe you're using an internal trainer, it doesn't matter. Whoever you're using, what is the path for consistency and follow-up? Um, there's a few things that are really going to show up if you don't have that development plan in place. Number one, you're going to lack consistency. So let's just talk about an experience we had on Friday lunchtime. Where did you take me for lunch on Friday? Oh. Should I say? Yeah. Okay. So, so we went to lunch at Cooper's Hawk, and there's a Cooper Hawk, Cooper's Hawk in Naples, Florida, where we live, and we absolutely love Cooper's Hawk. Love, love, love the it. food. 
We love the uh, just the feel of the place, the ambiance, the everything that they do there. The cool little store they have. The wines, the, concept, o- the wines okay, but I mean. Well, it depends. I think yeah, sometimes the, the wines concept are really is good. Great. But the Cooper's Hawk, I love their business model. I love their concept, and so here. And we've been to Cooper's Hawks in probably three other states in addition to the one that we've been to in Naples. Um, so. What happened on Friday, unfortunately, has happened too many times to us down here, is we got, we had some really terrible service, right? Everything from the server herself in just not being attentive, there was like a 30 minute period and we were there on a weekday during lunch and we're not retired and it wasn't busy. Um, And to be fair, she got slammed. I think part of it is a management issue that they, they don't have their staffing numbers right. So what's really interesting is, oh, and then the second part was they hadn't even done a check on their tables. And so all the outside tables were so far off, they were missing feet, like so much so that you couldn't eat on the table. And we couldn't find a a different table to go to because so many feet were missing. So Paul, you know, MacGyver's it and puts (laughs) his napkin underneath there. Anyway, we finally, I, I tried to wave our server down twice and she saw me both times, but I guess just couldn't get to me. And so we, we asked one of the bus boys, Hey, can you please get our server? We got to go. And the manager then happens to walk by and she asked how we're doing. And I was like, you know what? Not so good. We were going to go talk to her before leaving. Cause one thing we're committed to doing is to helping businesses really understand what sort of service they're providing, whether it's great, whether it's not great. I feel like the managers need to know cause you can't fix what you don't know. So we shared our feedback with the manager. Now here's the great news. They've already identified that they have had issues in their Naples store. Mm-hmm. In fact, they brought um, three different management positions in from different successful Cooper's Hawk locations. So they've actually relocated successful managers to be here in Naples. So all of you who are here with us and you've been frustrated at some time about the service there, it is a work in progress. They're on it. They're fixing it. I was so happy to hear this because we, we love the food. We want to go back. Um, so hopefully we'll have a success story and follow up, but, but let me just go back to the number one issue here is consistency. Now, if you've been, we've been to Cooper's Hawk locations, we expect a certain level of service. And when you don't get it, guess who you tell everyone, everyone, <laughs> everyone we're telling you right now. Um, but again, hopefully this is a success story cause they're on it. So consistency is a major issue. So that, so again, we're talking about why employee training doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because most companies don't follow the training up with a development program that really reinforces and builds upon the new skills that have been learned. So we already talked about there's three issues that really happen when you don't have that development plan in place. One is you lose consistency. Mm -hmm. We just shared a story about that. The second one is um, your engagement levels are going to drop within your organization, right? employees, human beings love growth and development. So if you're not developing your team, then the chances are really good that your engagement levels are going down. Now, we've heard it said before, like we've had business owners say, but I don't want to spend all this money developing my team and then they're just going to leave and go work for somebody else. And you know, you know the old saying there, but yeah, what if, what if you don't train them? What if you don't invest in them and you don't develop them and then they stay and they serve your customers. Yeah, and, and employees these days are looking to be developed. Absolutely. And there's nothing more frustrating than when you get trained as an employee, like you mentioned in your story. Yeah, I had the same experience too. as well. I worked for a printing company, and a guy had a great business he was running. and But he sent us to a sales training program, and we went for one day, and... They, they talked about where, you know, they have the one-day training and then you're supposed to have the follow-up afterwards. And this is supposed to go on for, you know, for as long as you want. It was sort of like a membership program, but you just stay within. So you're always having that conversation about the sales skills and tools that they taught. Well, we had the sales training program, which was great. Super excited about it. Learned so much. But then I even have, I didn't invest in it. He didn't invest in it. And just never developed, never continued to use those skills. I still use a couple here and there, but like the overall skill set was never learned because the development wasn't there. The training was, the kickoff session was the training, but not the development. 
So you really, you lose your return on investment you there. Do. You really lose your return. And so you made a good point. You have the opportunity probably to pay out of your own pocket mm -hmm. and continue. And, you know, I really kind of believe if your employer is not going to pay for it, it's up to each of us to make our own investments. You know, I was seeking and seeking a mentor when I was younger and could not find her, could not find him. And it was really lost on me back in those days that that was my obligation and my responsibility and not someone else's. So I began to invest a lot in my own personal and professional development. And, and hopefully that's made a little bit of a difference for me. Um, okay, so the one other thing that, so, so that I've said two things so far that lack of development will create. Lack of consistency, right, which is a challenge because if you've got an inconsistency in your business that your customers are not going to appreciate that, um, engagement levels will drop, right, because people love training. But then the third thing I think is a really, really important thing. If you're a business owner, you, you will appreciate this more than anything, is that you're going to lose your top performers if you're not really investing in their development, right? Because top performers, by their nature, want to learn and want to grow. And so if they're in a company, I've seen this happen all too often, they're in a company and the company is not investing in their growth and development, they go and find a company that will. So, you know, we're, again, we're talking about why training doesn't work and, and you know, maybe we, we could have said, here's how training can work, should work, where you can get a much, much better return is just making sure that you have a development plan in place so that you can actually retrain, break those bad habits, build those new skills, expand on those new skills, and get them to be the norm, right? Get them to be habitual. It's it's kind of like the puppy training program. Yeah. Think about that. We took um we took our dogs when they were babies to to a training course, which of course let's be very clear here, they're not really training the dog, they're training these two how to treat the dog because the dog's actually really smart. Um, and my dog actually won the prize for what was a best little student or yeah. something like she she won a, a a heel and a sit or something contest which I was really excited about however the parents did not do an awesome job in the continued development of the puggle and so the puggle was less than stellar at home and we were wondering like what happened here <laughs> she was so good at the training program what's going on um, so we need to uh, take a little bit of our own advice and make sure to to continue that development. And on that note, thank you for joining us for another Evolve to Win show with Heather and Paul. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't connected with us yet, please go to heatherchristie.com and sign up for our leadership list. Uh, or you can always catch this too on YouTube. Um, so if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, we'd love it if you would subscribe. Um, if there's somebody who you know, so if, let's say that you're working at a company and maybe the training and or development has been inconsistent and somebody uh, you'd like to hear this message, please feel free to share this message with them. Have an awesome day.